So um, I am back for the next part of the Conquest Relay Run. Uh, I haven't seen anything yet. I am just loading up the recording now. Uh, sorry, my voice is still not good. So let's see what we've got. Okay, Corin is a Wyvern Rider. That is immensely disappointing. Who, who wants to be Wyvern Corin? Uh, oh, well that's just mean Forge name. Nyx is an outlaw. Okay. Uh oh, the mean names continue. He has two rank bows, so I don't had her. Oh no. <laughs> okay, um, I mean, I guess that's happening. These forge names are just cruel. <laughs> I assume this was someone's doing. Uh, mm. Okay. Um, everyone else, but Silas got benched. Good. That's for the best. Okay, so aside from the Scott de Jura, um, the terrible, terrible Forge names, Corin being in a lame class, and yeah, okay, uh, required to get support, so let's do those real fast. Okay, so a couple of things right off the bat. <laughs> For one, um, I want to get Corin into a better class, and by better class I mean a worse class. So let's check what my options for that are. So first let's read this. I can tell our fish has been neglected. Her stats are... Well, her level just isn't where it should be at this point. Poor fish. Okay, so we have A with Camilla. A with Jill. B with Jacob. Or Sue. B with Ali. Hmm. Let's take a look at our... Who built the Dusk Dragon? Dusk Dragon is an awful building. It only makes your life harder. Nice. Uh... 50 kills on Nyx. Okay. Um... So, things to do. Uh, I have to rename all of our forges because they are cruel and unusual. I want to think about what I can do with Corin, And I have some ideas, depending on... I guess I need to take stock of items. Master Seal, Partner Seal, Seraph's Robe. Oh. Oh. I guess Bulk did actually burn the rescue staff. I haven't seen anything yet. I'm going to go back and check out what everyone has done in a bit. But yeah, rescue staff is actually gone. Tragic. Okay. Well, first things first, the obvious thing to do is uh, that. We'll go with the flower to honor Mozu. And we will change our forge names and relay out the castle to uh, better represent that. Okay, let's see what 
Yes. It is just chapter 15. Ah. Uh, so chapter 15 is usually for core and training. And I've been given two forged good weapons in Wyvern Rider Core. Presumably, they want me to build up Corrin's axe rank and get her to promotion. I have zero interest in doing that. Instead, I will be doing something slightly more cursed, depending on what's in the shop. Okay, I have some ideas. Yeah, okay. I will do some planning. Uh, I will check out what the others actually did instead of just seeing the aftermath. And I will come back with my plans. Okay. While I'm doing a week's worth of support grinding via time travel in the background, I briefly want to go over why I'm putting Corin into the class I'm putting her into. In front of me here is every promoted class option in phase. Uh, so let's just start alternating with them. For one, the DLC classes. Pointless to consider. The special classes Corin can access, can't get. These are all of the classes that we can actually use. However, a lot of them are unobtainable, so we'll cross those off. And then I also want to cross off non-magical classes. Well, Corrin is a mage, it'd be a waste not to use it. So these are the actual classes that we want to consider. From here, I want to eliminate the ones that just don't have good defense. Corrin is a really durable unit, and it's a shame to waste that on a low defense base. Uh, I want to immediately eliminate Falcon Knight. There's no Bolt Nagadata in Conquest, so while Steve's are technically a magical option, uh, it won't have any magical offensive options, so we can cross off the list. Technically, Mage should be crossed off for the same reason, because someone sold the Flame Shuriken, but I didn't know that at the time, so I was considering it. I want to eliminate Nor Noble. It's not a good class. I'm not going to go into why it's not a very good class. But it's not. Next up, Dark Knight and Malignite. They're clearly the best classes here, and it's not even close. Malignite is probably the best class in the game, and Dark Knight is particularly well suited to Corn. But those classes are so overdone. Corn ends up in them in so many runs, and it's so powerful and so boring that it's not the kind of thing that I want to see here. And immediately get across those two off. That leaves us with three pretty good options. Um, Sorcerer in particular is Tome Locked. And being Tome Locked isn't actually a problem. Uh, there's tons of really versatile and useful tomes in this game that Corrin could absolutely take advantage of, and a lot of them come from the Ophelia prologue, and I have zero faith in our team's ability to not only get Odin married, but then do the Ophelia Prologue without someone wasting resources, and then not sell them. So I'm gonna cross off Sorcerer. And now we have it down to two classes. Comparing them side by side, it's not even close which one's better. Priestess has better stats across the board, and decently better growth rate modification. In terms of weapon access, normal or shurikens would be better than bows, but Corrin's a magical unit for the most part, so the shining bow is also one to reach, which nullifies the only lead that daggers have over bows. And Ethrax Staves is irrelevant. No one's going to cast men 251 times with Corrin. From there, the only lead maid can try to contest is its class skills. But Miracle is better than Resistance plus 2. Uh, Renewal is better self-sustained than to serve. 
the only advantage his maid has is in Tomb Breaker and Demo Zhao. Now, Demo Zhao is slightly better than Rally Lock, but Rally Lock is also with incredible skill. It doesn't really feel for the penalized priestess for having one of the best skills in the game. So the only real lead game is Counter Magic over Tomb Breaker. But both of those skills are so bad it's kind of irrelevant. So the best option for our coring is Priestess. But someone wasted our last heart seal on Kenshi Naibijara, so I can't actually put coring into Priestess, meaning we have to go with the second best option of Maid. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm time traveling forward uh, through five days in order to talk to Elise and give her a present, as well as visit the private quarters to talk to her. This builds up support points. Uh, normally, this builds up support points pretty slow, but because Corrin and Elise have a same gendered sex support, it's ridiculously quick to get them to an A support. So, with that grinding, we can put Corrin as a maid. Okay, um, hello everyone, I am back with uh, my preps for this chapter done. I've also done a lot of rearranging of the forges and in the castle. Uh, the only thing that I want to do is grab this. Uh, I guess I could actually do that with Cupid Bell. Um, because I would like to get Corrin uh, trained up. The goals for this chapter are to get Corrin to level 17 in Wyvern Rider, then promote her and reclass her into Maid and start building her dagger rank. Ideally, I'd want to get C rank. Unfortunately, since we're starting in Wyvern Rider, we're going to have to spend a few turns not building dagger rank, which is rough. Um, and obviously, I'm not going to obsess over weapon rank as much as some other players have been doing. You know who I'm talking about. But I would like to get Corrin to Flame Shuriken rank, is what I would say if we had a Flame Shuriken. But we don't. So instead, uh, I just want to get her to see through the damage boost and access to the Steel Shuriken that Kaze has. Um, I also obviously do want the Wyvern Rider skills. Strength plus two and Lunge are both exceptional skills, and I would like to get them. So yeah, here we go. Oh, what the settings? Okay, um... The animation's off, the animation's off, can't speak fast, can position all map to on. It's like someone went through every single setting and changed them. Um... Okay, there's the settings I like. Okay, first order of business is immediately... First order of business is immediately taking, going in and getting as much kill link as we can over here. Unfortunately, the dual Naganai here does mean Corn won't have good accuracy on this enemy, but it is what it is. Uh, fortunately, villager caps out at C rank lances, so they don't get that much for weapon triangle. Only 10 hit and avoid, which gets doubled to 20. And Gunter's forceful partner helps make up most of that, so it's not too bad. We then want to go over here. Unfortunately, Corrin doesn't double soldiers, so we have to use the Raider's Axe, which is going to impact her hit pretty poorly on the other side. Yeah, but that's fine. Next order of business is to get an extra swing of the weapon without using her turn. But Corrin's gonna go here, switch to Gunter, the chaplain. And by standing in, say, a wood tile, we would be able to deactivate Gunter's elbow room and deal less damage to these enemies, changing our uh, one-hit KO and two-hit KO thresholds on enemies, which would overall give us more weapon EXP, 
I'm just not interested in, in doing that. I just want to get Corin up to the correct level and get a little bit of dagger. Nothing crazy, but I do want her in the class. I want her in. Uh, admittedly, I don't have a good reason to put her in maid anymore. But, you know, put in all this work, might as well see the progress, see the whole thing through. And there's our first level. Wait, no, our second level. She has lunch now. In that case, we want to get her into maid ASAP. I do not want to spend any more time with Wyvern than I have to because it's just wasted potential. I don't intend to put her back into an axe class, and if someone else does, I want that to be more difficult for them, because I don't want Gorin back in an axe class. I don't think there's any interesting ones for her to use. First, we want to promote to Wyvern Lord. Since promoting on this side will also promote on the other side, we want things to be set up so that Gorin has the most positioning options available before she reclasses. Which is, of course, going into Wyvern Lord. Uh, well, Malignite would be the same, but you get what I mean. There, since her class has quite a bit of bulk on her. She probably can't take on all of these enemies, but she can take on a handful. So, we will grab her a dagger out of the convoy. And then we will use the partner symbol to reclass into May via the Elise support. Need immediately puts a hit to her non-magical staff. Which would normally be fine. More magic is good after all. Uh, except that for obvious reasons our Corin can't use magic. I'm still not over that flame shuriken thing. But it's still not a bad class. Ninja and Maid are essentially the same class. Everyone knows Ninja's good. What people don't realize is that Maid does basically everything Ninja does uh, with just a little bit more bulk instead of the uh, offense and speed that Ninja would have. In Corrin's case, she has access to good who can pretty much fix all of her offensive problems forever. So it doesn't really matter that her offensive capabilities are a little weaker in maid because Gunter patches them up. Meanwhile, I mean, extra bulk is extra bulk, and Corrin can always make use of it because she gets so many sources of extra uh, defense boosters. The Grimiato, Jacob's personal skill, all of the which we're in the Grimiato. Yeah, I should be holding that. Uh, these enemies are violates. That vi violates. Violates. I don't know, uh, but since they are violates, they will always attack, even if. Wow, you can. That's okay. Well, that's fine. We'll just leave it. Uh, that means that we can do some cheesy things. The Grimiato won't actually impact our enemy face like uh, most weapons would, because um, these enemies will attack even if they don't see any damage. So we can just keep steamrolling through with the defense boost. I don't know why the Grimiato was taken off her in the first place. That's a little strange. Uh, there's pretty much, well, there is reasons to do that. Sometimes you do need less defense. But overall, it's always good to have on her. Works regardless of class. And it can make her a really tanky unit. 19 defense and maid is pretty good. Now we just want to slowly feed kills to her. I'd like to get all the stat boosters. I think I can. Um... The stat boosters on this map are a speed wing, a goddess icon, and a uh, spirit dust, if I remember correctly. I probably don't. 
I am very bad at remembering things. Which is kind of awkward. Um, Maeve has high luck, and Corrin's pretty much in Gartina's 24-7, so she doesn't need that much credit void despite her luck boon. Um, right now she only has 10, but, you know, none of these enemies have 10 crit, so it's fine. Uh, but it does make things a little awkward. But that I don't have anyone to use the stat boosters on. Uh, obviously, you know, I want to promote my own interests in the run. I want to uh, generally just make the unit, you know, who I want them to be. I want to influence my own agency on the run. That's the whole point. But in this case, we're in slight, a uh, slightly awkward spot because there's no one good to use the stat boost sign. Corrin's doubling pretty well. She has 22 speed right now. She can't use magic because of the flame shuriken, and as I said, her luck's fine. So it brings up an interesting question of, do I use the boosters on? I could use them on Gunter, but Gunter's stats are pretty much unusable outside of very specific contexts. So it doesn't make much sense to use them on him. I could use them on Ashura, but it's speed and luck. Two stats she has in abundance and magic, and as funny as Shining Bow Azura might be, I don't want to encourage the Shining Bow going to anyone but Nyx or potentially Corrin. So I don't really want to do that. So instead I'm just going to have to leave them all behind. Um, Obviously, I'm still going to get them. I'll just have to give them to Zora, uh, and trust that he'll make good use of them. It seems a lot of people in this run have not been trusting the other players, but you know what? I still have what little faith in humanity. Uh, that's a lie. They're going to get wasted on someone, but that's okay. It's the whole point of the run, uh, doing ridiculous things because you won't have to see the consequences of them. In this case, uh, I will just leave all of the boosters in Azura's inventory, probably. I can't I mean, I think the way I have this planned out, she will end up getting all of the kills. Uh, which sounds awkward, but Trust me, it's for the best. I just need her dual striking off of a lot of things so that we can maximize the XP gain for Corrin. I don't intend to move very fast. I have no incentive to at this point. So it's fine to just slow down and take things at our own pace. And uh, of course, farm out the stat boosts. With this kill, Corrin clears out the top side at a healthy D rank shurikens and a 17 and 2 nade. Next, we don't want to be in range of the fighters. Uh, weapon triangle disadvantage does, in fact, suck, and we don't want that to happen. The cool thing about this map is because of the interactions between the replicas, I can start to dangerously overextend Corrin, uh, since I can just heal her on the other side. Normally you would have Azura who could heal a lot more. In this case, we don't, which sucks. Uh, but there's still some fun stuff we can do. Like, for instance, realizing that uh, one of them could. So we'll fall back to here. We've still got plenty of time. Come on. Yeah, it's only turn 13. So we've still got seven turns. We can... I just said we could dangerously overextend Corrin and then retreat it. But I want to milk these enemies. Not as much as possible, but a little bit, you know. 
Okay. Next up. That's a Shura kill. Send the bomb to the convoy and get in position to bait the first fighter. Uh, we don't need the bomb. She's got enough HP. We bait the first fighter and knock him down. Okay, now we want the bomb. Okay, uh, none of these guys have anything actually worth keeping them alive for. Uh, the Alex guy one shot the sure. drone. That's unfortunate. The hand axe guys don't, though. Yes, they do. She's low HP. But that's a simple fact. Doop. And now. Yep, she doesn't get one shot. So we can attack this guy. Get a lethal dual strike. Take out this guy, and she's fine on this face. Now, Azura can fly away. Continue chugging her vuln in preparation to take on the boss, which we do, of course, want. And Corin can simply go here. Use her vuln to heal off the attack that she attacked into. more turns, but that shouldn't be an issue. Corn has 18 attack and this guy has 15 defense. That means she can damage him, but not if he equips his steel stone, which is the weapon he would want to use against both of Azura's weapon types. Fortunately, you will recover some HP. So, we can get in here. Yeah. Okay. You one shot Sejura. Lovely. Yeah, with the Steel Star Axe, she'll do no damage. But if Ashura pulls out the Nose's legacy, she does substantially more. She still gets one shot. Fortunately, Corrin doesn't get one shot. Now, with the debuff, we can transfer, switch. Equip the Steel Axe, Vuln Gunter. And we're now out of Vulns, so that's all we can do for soon. Could equip a Blood of Candle, but the Blue Sky is one might anyways. So Corrin will likely tank. But G Gunter, you were supposed to hit that. Uh, well that's a pain. Corrin can take one more hit, but awkward. Okay. Gunter, go in and actually hit your attack this time. Gunter on this side, use a bone to heal. Corrin, wait for that bone and heal. We should attack Gunter, perfect. And he has a guard gauge, so he lifts. And now, on exactly turn 20, Azura can finish him off. But not before. Oh, Corn actually. Oh, right. I forgot that the, um. The replicas in this chapter don't count for that character's uh, person ID. So you don't get buffs from, say, 
and a uh, personal skill like it just so pouring transfer over Azura attack with the votive candle safely Pull one last round of combat transfer over Azura switch and taken down finishing the chapter in exactly the time he turned time limit getting all of the stat boosters, and getting Corrin right about where I want her. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. I will be handing this off to Zora to see what he plans to do in Chapter 16, with the first heart seal since, well, Sloan went crazy. Yeah, uh, so thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.